Tiritiri Matangi Island is a wildlife sanctuary and one of New Zealand's most important conservation projects. There are very few places in New Zealand where you can readily see and walk amongst so many rare species, including the flightless Takahe bird, one of the world's rarest. So follow along with us as we spend three days and two nights on this fascinating island as we seek to get to know its residents. Tiri Tiri Matangi Island is located in the North Island of New Zealand. It's 31 kilometres north of Auckland City as the seagull flies. It's just 4 kilometres from the tip of the Whangaparaa Peninsula and not far from where I live, which is in Stanmore Bay. To get to the island, book the Fuller's Ferry which leaves from Queen's Wharf in downtown Auckland. The journey starts with a biosecurity briefing. Good morning, uh, fast stop. Had a good trip coming here. Um, there are just a few things you need to know before you head over to Tiri Tiri, uh, just to make the trip safe and fun. Uh, the first two things are biosecurity, uh, just making sure you will brush your shoes. Yeah, um, so that's really important just to get rid of soil, seed, and dirt from the bottom of your shoes. Um, what this does is prevents the transfer of a disease called Kobe dieback. Uh, which affects our native trees, so just be really careful with it. The second thing, if you take any bags over, please make sure they are sealed. Uh, that's just to prevent any stowaways from getting onto the island. Things like rats, mice, Argentine ants, plague skinks, and uh, sometimes small children um, can be very dangerous to the trees there. Um, other than that, I hope you have plenty of food and water for your entire stay. There is a volunteer shop run by the guys just right in the front. Um, that's really important for the, all the proceeds from that go straight back into the island. But other than that, there is uh, no substantial food. I think they just sell refreshments there. Um, so please have food and water with you. There is a cafe on board if you need to buy anything last minute. Uh, I think the last thing from me is your last sailing time back. Uh, last and only sailing time, I believe, is 3.30. Okay, so please do not miss that. Your last sailing time will be at 3.30. If you do miss it, it will either be a $500 water taxi or a very long swim. Okay, so do not miss that ferry back. Um, that's it from me. I hope you have a great trip. Thank you for choosing to travel to Thank you. Thank you. The cost of the ferry from Auckland City to the island is $82, but if it's your first time there, it's best to buy the guided walk and ferry ticket combo. For $92. Accommodation on the island is $30 per person per night, hugely affordable for us budget travellers. The first leg of the ferry journey is 50 minutes and it arrives at Gulf Harbour to pick up other passengers and that's where I got on. The second leg of the journey to the island takes just 20 minutes. Yeah. In the suitcase. <laughs> smile for the smile for the camera. <laughs> okay, off you go. The ferry leaves Auckland City at nine o'clock in the morning and reaches Tiri Tiri Marting at about quarter past ten. Immediately upon arrival, you're treated to beautiful sea colours and scenes of the island's wildlife. Here, an Auckland shag demonstrates how to fly underwater. There's a series of briefings for visitors, and credits are given to Fuller's Ferry, who provide free transport for the volunteers. Also, Chelsea Sugar, who provide the sugar supplements for the birds, and Dilma, who provide complimentary tea, and Nestle for the complimentary coffee. As we were staying for two nights, we received a second briefing, and then walked up to the bunkhouse to receive our third and final briefing. There was plenty to see on our way to our accommodation and we passed a number of feeding stations, essential at this time of year due to the drought. Feeding stations are designed to allow certain birds only, in this case the endemic bellbird. They have a lifespan of up to 8 years. By the way, all bird sounds in this video were recorded either on our cameras or phones.
At open stations, when the tui is not around, the little bellbird can sneak in for a feed. The bunkhouse is well appointed, but because of the drought we had to conserve water. And the electrical systems are a combination of solar and diesel generator, so that has to be conserved as well. LPG gas is brought in from the mainland. So this is the life, eh? So yeah. we've got here carrots and onions. Yep. Yeah. And uh, rice. Right. And um, butter chicken flavouring. Butter chicken flavouring, yep. Going in later. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. What is it? Uh, it's it's corn and um, pep, 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 yeah. I think that's about it. Yep. It's uh, got the whole kitchen to ourselves too. <laughs> whole table to ourselves. Yeah. And uh, tonight hopefully it's penguins. Actually we're eating really early so that we will be free to go not turn on the electricity for the next few hours. Yeah. Yeah. So that we can have a wave. Yep. So. Yep. Beautiful day today. Great crossing. Could be better. It was really great fun staying at this Department of Conservation bunkhouse. So now let's take a ticky tour of the premises. We found other travellers videos of the bunkhouse really helpful in preparing for our stay here. So we hope you find our experiences helpful too. <laughs> kiwi! Kiwi! <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the only kiwi I'm going to see here. <laughs> I don't know, even a kiwi. That's a kiwi for you. Just cleaning the stove. Chip, chip, <laughs> chip, chip. <laughs> cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Stephen, go away. Jeez. <laughs> I was going to say my favourite boot was. I'm sure you were. We had wonderful company over the three days here and met wildlife enthusiasts and experts from several countries. And after sharing accommodation with them, they almost seem like family. This is the Kokako room where Stephen and I are staying tonight. Gorgeous, nice, cool bunk room. And the Takahe walk out on the grass out here. That one's standing on one leg. Mm. Oh, because it's using the other one. The Takahe flightless bird was thought to be extinct until about 250 were found in the South Island in 1948. Sadly, they are declining in the wild with only an estimated 400 left, including what's on this island. They have a lifespan of up to 20 years. Here, they are banded for identification. A mum, a dad, and a brother to help feed this chick. The Pukeko, a relative of the Takahe, has been more successful as a survivor. It's a native of New Zealand and isn't on the endangered list. There are estimated to be more than 600,000 of these birds in New Zealand. 
They can fly long distances and despite not having webbed feet, they are strong swimmers. After setting up in the bunkhouse, it was time to explore the many walking tracks and just soak in the environment. Here, on the wattle track, a number of stitch birds were going about business. The stitch bird's conservation status is one of being endemic, threatened and nationally vulnerable. Its total population in New Zealand is about 3,000, of which there are only about 200 on Turi Turi Matangi. We had a wonderful time at Turi Turi Matangi Island and we hope you had the same experience in following along with us. But wait, there's more. In part two of our journey, we show you the walking tracks, the stunning scenery, our night walks, New Zealand's giant weta and tuatara, and finally, we continue our bird mania. So, see you soon. Mm -hmm.